This is Plus Politics, and thank you for staying with us. The Interim Management Committee, the IMC of the Niger Delta Development Commission, the NDDC, has accused members of the National Assembly for majority of the rot in a commission. The federal lawmakers, it alleged, were frustrating efforts to develop the Niger Delta and requesting 6.4 billion naira for the 132 unexecuted projects. Still to speak with us on this, this evening is political analyst, Mr. Agbola Oba. Thank you, Mr. Agbola Oba, for joining us on the show tonight, still. Thank you for the opportunity once again. Yes, initially you were given your thoughts about the padding, the budget padding saga. I just need you to conclude on that, please. You have to be very careful to put the appellation of budget padding on what is uh, what is unfolding between the NDDC and the House of Representatives for which the Senate has put its head into it. Um, I have always told you since your days in the other place that technically there's nothing, there's nothing called budget pardon. It is the prerogative of the parliament in any liberal democracy to debate, change, figures submitted to it by the executive on a budget. So when I hear budget padding, I must be very honest with you, I get a bit, <laughs> you know what. But what is happening between, what is unfolding between the NDDC and the, and the committee, the oversight committee of the NDDC of the House of Representatives, the, the lower chamber of Na National Assembly is a case of blatant allegation of bribery, bribery and corruption. That is what is being alleged. The extent to which that is true within the context of what the House should do, I think at, at this juncture, given that blatant allegation, I think at this juncture, it is incumbent to the House to, to activate its ethics committee to look into that allegation. But it is a blatant case of a very serious allegation. But like I've always told you, there is nothing in the liberal democracy that is called budget party. It is the prerogative of parliament in a liberal democracy to debate a proportion bill, and it is indeed the prerogative of parliament in a liberal democracy to change any figures because they represent the entirety of the sovereign. That is the electors of a polity. Okay. Now joining us on the show tonight is the official spokesperson of the House of Reps and Chairman Media and Public Affairs, member representing Bondi Federal Constituency in Abia State, talking about Rep Representative Benjamin Okeze Kalu. Thank you, Mr. Benjamin Okeze, for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now, amongst all the allegations, the, the managing director of the commission, Professor Keme Ponde, says 50% of the Commission's inability to deliver its mandate came from the stranglehold of the National Assembly on the Commission. Your reaction, Mr. Kalu? Um, thank you very much for that beautiful question. I think um, what some of the agencies are trying to do is to change the direction of the discussion. What is on the table is that 40 billion has been wasted. And there are complaints from Nigerians to this effect. And it is our responsibility, based on the provisions of Section 88 of our Constitution, especially uh, Section 20, 88, Sub 2, Paragraph B. Let me read you what it says. Expose corruption, inefficiency, or waste in the execution and administration of laws within its legislative competence and in the disbursement or administration of funds appropriated by it. This is, the, this is the commission, the mandate of the House of Representatives, a leading member of the National Assembly. We don't want to be reduced to, uh, the National Assembly to be reduced to the point where whenever we want to carry out the mandate of this particular commission that is found in the, in the Constitution, people will raise unfounded allegations and then begin to drag uh, the National Assembly into ridiculous discussions. 
What is on the table is that we have been accused of this and that. All we have done is in the, in the last one year, we have not done our oversight function. And we have requested that it is time for us to do our oversight function. And suddenly accusations started springing up. One, we had that we are doing budget pardon. The next, we had that we are the one doing budget delay. We also had that we are against forensic auditing. All these are mere allegations that have been out there just to distract the public. The public is interested in knowing how much we appropriated in 2019. How have you used that money? When they talk about uh, 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 forensic auditing, they did not put it in the budget. When they presented their budget estimate, it was not there. This presidential directive was not captured in the budget estimate that they presented. We noticed that it was missing. And in the wisdom of the leadership of the House, we were instructed to put, make a provision, make a budget head for this particular directive of the president to be carried out. And that we did. And that is why today it is funded, and that is why today that we are talking about forensic auditing. Yes, people have been asking questions about this forensic auditing, what do we have against it? Absolutely nothing. We have nothing against forensic auditing. The only questions that have been coming up is with regards to how the forensic auditing external auditors were selected. Was it in line with the provisions of Section 85, Sub 3, uh, Paragraph A and B of the Constitution? Uh, with regards to the um, Office of the Auditor General, did he do what he's supposed to do with regards to those who fulfill this role of forensic auditing? That we will find out in the course of our investigative proceedings with the uh, IMC and the NDDC. We've been accused of uh, delay to the budget. The provision of Section 18, subsection 1 of the Establishment Act of uh, NDC, NDDC 2000 says that every budget of the uh, commission should be presented 30th of September of the preceding year. We arrived National Assembly June of 19, 20, uh, 2019. We expected to see a budget that must have been submitted since the 30th of September of 2018 to enable us to look at it. We wrote to them severally. They did not comply. It took a motion that I moved personally on the 13th of November, asking them to stop doing extra budgetary expenses, that it was illegal for them to come on the 26th of November to present their budget. When they did that, they did not accompany that with the supporting document, which is the budget performance of 2018, to enable us to do the expected budget benchmarking, to know how they spend the money of 2018 against the 2019 estimate that they are making. When we did not see that, we asked the IMC to present it. We wrote them a letter, 4th of December. They came 10th of December. That particular document was also missing. We waited for them till the 5th of February. When they came 5th of February and presented and, uh, this document that we are looking for, by the 27th of February, three weeks, we approved the budget. So where is the delay of the budget coming from? People talk about budget pardon. I've had, we added 5,000, 7,000, 1,000 uh, projects into the budget. All these are lies because the total budget of 2019 captured 5,959 projects that is spread across 10 areas, including the head office and nine states. Out of these 5,959 projects, 5,416 projects was a rollover from 2018, which means when you do your deduction, it's leaving us with 543 new projects. And these 543 new projects include the furnishing of the head office, the completion of the head office, also the forensic auditing. These are part of the new um, a project that we are being accused of. And like the gentleman who just finished uh, uh, speak, speaking said, you cannot bring a, an estimate before the National Assembly and expect us to take it back to you the same way you brought it. We must critically analyze it and find out if there's any problem with it. We found out there was a problem with the one they presented. What they presented to us was a budget of 409 billion, 409 billion um, uh, Naira worth of budget. Where, while the, 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 there was no source of funding that would be able to cut up for that, what we did was to pull it down from 409 billion to 345 billion, removing 63 billion. We did not add the budget, we did not part the budget. We actually oh, Kalu, let, me, let me interject there, let me interject for a moment now. Now, the acting managing director of the commission, Professor Keme Ponde, said his committee was faced with additional pressure from some members of the National Assembly to pay for 132 jobs 
which had no proof of execution. What do you say to this? How, how can it be true? How can we arrive June? Between June of last year and the passing of the budget that is ending this, this month, how many 132 projects were? There, there is nothing like that. This is just mere accusation. And that was why we have given them the opportunity to do fair hearing. We said, we are inviting you to come to National Assembly. If you have any issue, present it to us. If there are people that you want to, you know, uh, complain about that they compromise their position or they, you know, made you, you know, alter one or two things, it is an opportunity for you to be here with regards to that. Also, there are other platforms. The security agencies are there, like the DSS, like the ICPC, like the EFCC. They are supposed to go and report those um, uh, uh, complicit members of the committee to these agencies to commence their investigation because it's actually a criminal offense. So this should not in any way stop us from the work we are doing. We don't want to be distracted. The forensic auditing has been ordered by the president, it's going on, but as a national assembly, we need to equip ourselves with the required information so that we can benchmark whatever report that will come from the forensic auditing against what we have found you know, in the course of our oversight function. Okay, so there is then. nobody... Great. Mr. Bolaba, yeah, finally, Mr. Bolaba, yeah. do, do you think in any ways the National Assembly has a stranglehold of the NDDC that has made it unable to deliver on its mandate, as alleged by Professor Keme? Mr. Bolaba. I am not an investigator. I don't work for EFCC. I don't work for the Nigerian police. The only thing I know that I can say authoritatively is that there is a history of mischief and corruption well established by instances from the moment President Olusha Gumabasanjo sat is then Minister for Education for, play, for paying a booty to the National Assembly. So Aroma Ote standing in front of a committee of the National Assembly and pointedly accusing a member the chair of the committee that had oversight over security, uh, security and exchange commission then, the gentleman is back, is back in parliament now. So where we are now, so there is a history of, you remember Mr. Integrity, the leader of the so-called integrity group of the 6th National Assembly or the 7th National Assembly, who was, who was putting dollars under is a Shagari type cap with family or Tedola. At least we saw the video. I'm sitting here now, not wanting to be presumptuous about what may have happened between the NDDC and the committee that has oversight over the NDDC of the House of the Deputies. But I'm saying adversely to the National Assembly, especially to the House of the Deputies, that it's about time. They reviewed the methodology and the mechanism they used in engaging with these agencies because it's becoming one time too many. And the, the, weight, of, the weight of perception, the weight of perception is tilting against them. Mr. Golaba, I want to thank you very much for joining us on the show and for your contribution. And Mr. Carlo, too, thank you for the brief moment you joined us. And we're going to call for you again sometimes in the week, next week, and let's celebrate further on this. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalu. Thank you very much for inviting me. I hope to speak to you soon. I'll give my take right after this break. Stay with us. Here's my take. Borrowing isn't a bad thing, even as great nations of the world have been known to also borrow funds for specific developmental projects for the benefit of its citizens. But to me, the pertinent question is, why is the Buhari government in this fiscal year not mustering its full capacity to harness the huge resources available in Nigeria to generate even half of the sum of its own budget, but has seen going in cap hands to source for foreign loans? The generally expressed concerns and fear is that, with this situation, the current administration may literally drive our nation to the brinks while exposing Nigerians to the rigs of modern-day slavery by mortgaging our future to economic appropriation by foreign interests. 
Already there is an ongoing situation of apprehension, anxiety and trepidation among the citizens, particularly the youths, who are now scared about their future and the survival of our nation. It is even more distressing that this administration cannot account for the loans it has taken so far. In spite of the deluge of loans, the lives of the ordinary Nigerians on whose behalf they claim to be amassing these debts have become worse since 2015. I call on our leaders and all Nigerians to look beyond our primordial differences and unite in one voice to save our nation from an imminent collapse. I also urge the National Assembly to stand on the side of the people and save the nation by immediately using its legislative instrument to enforce for check and balance. Also, while I acknowledge that the lawmakers reserve the right to probe the NDDC, but such investigations, when done in normal times, will be a welcome development. I think the issue now is that the IMC is focused on delivering on the president's forensic audit by December when its tenure ends. The probe at this time could actually be distracting for the commission from focusing on that exercise, which all stakeholders, including governors of the nine Niger Delta states, agreed with Mr. President is the way forward for the commission. I can only hope that this probe is not for any altruistic reason or an attempt to distract. This is Nigeria, and we cannot also rule out that the fact that some politicians from the region might also be struggling for the control of the NDDC for their self selfish political ambitions. Question is, is it okay for the National Assembly to nominate people to run the NDDC and give the lease to Mr. President? As much as we believe in the principles of the separation of powers and Mr. President has the right to nominate whoever he feels to run a place, he has the powers to hire and fire, so they should leave Mr. President to exercise that power. But I think what shouldn't happen or continue to happen is using the NDDC as a place to generate money for personal and political reasons. That's all we have tonight on the show. We have ways coming up. You don't want to tonight's episode. You don't want to miss tonight's episode. Plus Politics returns same time next week. Until then, stay well and be well.